Hello everyone and welcome to this Game Club walkthrough of the Sherlock Holmes card game. Now we will be doing this more often, more regularly. I uh, will be doing a, a kind of playthrough of some games just to give players, any um, players that are confused by playing a game, the chance to kind of understand the games they're playing. Now I've played this game many times in my life. Um, uh, there are, interesting enough, there was a school where I used to go to school, there was a school variant of this which I kind of started off, which I'm very proud of. But um, what I'll be showing you is this variant. This is the Sherlock Holmes card game official variant, uh, i.e. the actual proper game. Um, now, just for this, what you'll need to do is you will need to get all your villain cards and your game is a foot card, which we've worked into this packet here. These are the starter cards, which will play for three players. You need to choose the villain that you're going to play, take that out. I, some people will shuffle and choose. Other people, if they're paying four rounds, will choose each villain per time. We've chosen Moriarty, but we've also got uh, Colonel Moran, John Clay, and Charles Milverton. And obviously, Clay is from the Red-Headed League, and I believe Colonel Sebastian Moran is from the Speckled Banner. That's the one, the snake in the guttering, I think, or the, the air thing or something. I, I, I remember it, but it's been a long time, so I read it. Um, then you'll need to choose, and I'm following here, the, the basically the guide itself. Um, effectively, what you're trying to do is you're trying to, you get your three players, you get 16 cards and your two uh, additional cards, so your game is a foot and your villain card go in here. Your characters, Moriarty, Holmes and Watson, go and be shuffled in here with all the other cards. Objective of the game is to be the person with the least points at the end of the game, so don't forget that, always keep that in sight. Shuffle these cards, which have now been shuffled, and what we do is we're gonna shuffle them you will shuffle them obviously blind, but I'm going to shuffle them open. So we go right, one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. Brilliant. Now I would recommend keeping this card uh, as close to you, probably just for your information. And these your villain cards probably would best off back in the box, but I'll keep them out for the time being. Uh, I'm gonna keep that just there so we know. Now, following on from this, once this has been done, you each player, the three players who are playing this game will each have their cards set now ready to go. Uh, and we've got them open, as I said before. What you look for is you look for the person who's got the game as a foot card, and I know that's this player here. So they will lay it down like that. And then play goes left. So once, once you've obviously played that, you play it next to the draw pile, which is obviously this pile here, you then effectively start the game. Now you look at the bottom here, and as you can see, that color, and I'll just show you close up so you can see that, that color is the, the next color card that has to be played, which is the move card. At this point, probably people are saying, well, wait there, what happens here if yada, yada, yada? You're trying to, you've got to remember, you're trying to get the lowest score possible, and the lowest score it's, it's basically at the end of the round when either the villain escapes or the villain is found and I'll go through how the villain is found once we, we get into the, the mixture of the game. That is when you score. You do not score before that, you score only at that point and then effectively what you're supposed to do then is play again. Um, it's Imagine it as a kind of, I guess you'd argue it would be called in modern vernacular a trick type game. You're playing tricks, i.e. you're trying to get uh, cards disposed of and trying to hold on to cards with least value or effectively get rid of all your cards before someone else does. Um, it's, it, I'd liken it to the game we used to play like which is a game called Blackjack or it was called American Blackjack and that's not 21 that's basically um, it, it's effectively you would call it the the Uno of the card world so it's like an Uno time card game. Right so anyway so we're going to go left and we're going to go so we're going clockwise and we look at our character here now as you can see, his cards, he, he has the villain, but he has no blue card, so he has no movement card. So he will have to pick up a card from here, which he has done, and obviously, if that is a blue card, he can play it. Effectively though, he hasn't got a blue card, so he has to hold onto this card. So that is, that's basically his turn is finished. Now, it will then move left again, so effectively clockwise back round again to our player here, player number three. Now player number three is lucky, he has a train, actually has two train cards. You can get others, you can get handsome cab, etc, etc. I think there's also a walk or bike or something. Um, it says here, so your movement cards are train, handsome, and thick fog, excuse me. 
but what you can do is you can basically then drop that card so you won't have to pick up a card which is useful for you because effectively you're trying to get rid of as many cards as possible and you can play that on top of that card now just note you have thick fog or location now it will it will tell you with a movement card you can where it says move you can use thick fog but where it says specifically thick fog you cannot use another card that's blue it has to be thick fog or a location card so you put that down and as you can see just to note the value of that card is one so obviously these are okay to hold on to but they're effectively seen as movement cards they're effectively seen as cards that push the game forward so we go left now what we've noticed is unfortunately our, our player here does not have a green card or a thick fog card so he picks up a card and that's a disguise card one of the things I like about Sherlock Holmes the game is this colouring. I did mention it in my review about the fact that everything's colour coordinated and that allows for the game to be quite seamless. Right, so as you can see what we're doing is whatever happens is we're, we're getting to here. So if the, if the card can be played it must be uh, put down immediately otherwise it is added to the player's hand and play moves on to the left. In fact that's what you're doing. Play always moves one place to the left whenever the uh, effect of the card is played. Play ends when either a villain is arrested or succeeds in escaping. Now you see that's that's effectively the game as it is. That's the simplified version of the game. Where we'll get to now is basically the arrest portion of it, because the arrest portion of it is significant because obviously that's what most players will be playing for. What happens is to get an arrest, you will need to get certain parameters in place. And this will occur either when an arrest card is played or when a player has discarded all his or her cards. So for instance, as an example, if this player drops all of their cards, then there is an arrest that's made because this character still, this player still has the villain card on there. And you've got to remember the villain card is effectively worth quite a significant amount of points. And if you're trying to be the lowest scoring of the game of the, of the particular team or whatever then effectively you are being penalized for that so you're trying to sort of avoid that as much as possible the arrest card which i'm just going to show you some of the cards here because it's probably easiest if i go through the certain cards to look out for um there we go there's an arrest card there and i'll just see if i can find one of the because this is where people often come unstuck apologies i'm just sifting through and if you if you are watching this, you can obviously fast forward if you wish. There we go, that's what we want. Right, now as you can note, our heroes also are quite high value because you're effectively trying to use them to in order to resolve the thing, resolve the, the who's got the villain. So using any location, so if your location card is played, you can use it and all of them will be defined in this way. Named player shows all cards secretly. Alibi cannot be played. Arrest if guilty if not. So you can play Holmes in any location. So just an example, we have the country here. We play Holmes and Holmes can then say, I think you've got it, this character here. This person shows them in secret, here's my cards. If they have a villain, then the game, then the, the round is finished and you score all the cards that you have. So all of the cards, every person will effectively then score the number of cards that they have. That's it. So it's logical to play this. Obviously the, the suggestion is to play this late as possible. One, because you are trying to ascertain who may have the villain, but two is also because you'll be penalized for the points. However, it's sometimes not that simple. An arrest card, which is like this, can be played if the, if for instance you put like a nice suspect card where you've got an arrest so effectively just follow these these this is what you do is it's color matching and following so if you see I suspect the name player takes one card you are putting that down and saying I believe this person so I will put that down just imagine that's me putting it down I'll say this person's got a card they'll take a card now if the next player to them has an arrest card they will put that down and go yep I think that person's got it I believe you I think you've got the villain so you now need to show so effectively what happens is that you can either use an alibi to block that or you can you know show them the card show you don't have or do have if you don't have then you can move again that the game goes on the game continues the move card needs to be played a train a handsome thick fog etc etc and the game moves on very simple 
Now the alibi card, what will happen there is that will get played. That can be played out of turn. So if this person here says, so if our player one here says that player three is the person who's got it, they can play an alibi card and effectively it cancels the effect of the previous cards. All players pass on one card. So effectively all, pay, all players will basically go one card and they will give that to the next person. So you pass it on to other people. What that is, to be perfectly honest with you, is a chance for you to go, I've got the villain, you have the villain to the other player. That's what happens. The game is really simple in that respect because it does outline what each card does and it does tell you the color coordination in which to play. So for instance, Inspector Name Player takes two cards, arrest at Scotland Yard. So that's one that probably needs a little bit of uh, sort of explaining as such, but it's, it's, not, it's not too difficult. If you have, for instance, a Scotland Yard location played, so I'll give you an example, I'll, do, I'll show you Thick Fog as well, and I'll show you, apologies for this, I haven't, there we go, I haven't fully built this correctly, but if you have your Scotland Yard card played there, and then the next player will take two cards, and then this person plays an Inspector card, they will then name the player, and if that player, so the name player takes two cards, and it's arrested at Scotland Yard. So the arrest, if they're at Scotland Yard, it's effectively as if it's an arrest card that's been played. You can use an alibi card, as it says, or you can use an arrest card. So you can play that arrest card. Don't forget that. So you can use an alibi card, but the next person can use an arrest card. So you have to be very cautious of that. It's very much a case of, you can show your, say, I don't have the villain, the next person can put an arrest card and then effectively arrest somebody else if they wish. So really it's about tactically opening up um, other players to say, okay, this person doesn't have a villain. And that's what effectively you're doing. The game is very, 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 very simple. If I'm perfectly honest with you, it's not difficult. Thick Fog is the only thing as well that probably you need to know. Shuffle all the players' cards and redeal the same amounts each. So effectively what happens is you take all the cards, shuffle them up, and you redeal them to everybody, and that's it. That's the game. In a nutshell, that's the game. Um, scoring. So I should go for escape briefly before I go for scoring. Escape happens if, for instance, you have done all of your cards and your last card is the villain card. Even whatever cards out there, you can drop your villain card. You cannot drop your villain card until it's the last card, and at that point you can drop it. If you do that, you obviously escape, and what, what effectively happens is all villains have escaped, so that means the villain has won the round, and then you score everyone else's cards. Simple as that. Now, after a successful arrest, just to note scoring, all players total the value of the cards they still hold and add to their scores. Undetected villains are not counted. So if you're playing more than one villain, which can happen, they're not counted. The arresting player deducts from his or her score the value of all detected villain cards. The guilty player adds to his or her score the value of all detected villain cards. All detected villain cards. After an escape, players total the value of the cards they hold and add to their cumulative, cumulative if I can say that, score. Undetected villains are not counted. The player whose villain successfully escapes deducts their point value from his or her score. All the cards are now collected together and a fresh deal is played. So effectively what happens is at this point, this person deducts the 50 from it. Just as we've seen where they will add the 50 to it, they deduct it. So it's, it is effectively you are benefiting from the escape as much as you're benefiting from the rest. And that's the game. I hope that makes sense. If you need more clarification, leave a message at the bottom or send me uh, a message on Game Club and I'll try and see what I can do for you.